Holy cow. This big bulge shouldn't be there. This is why it's stranded. You kind of never know what we're gonna find when we open up an animal. We found nutrition labels sometimes, tarps, plastics. We had a dolphin that swam into a very large speedo. We very much are the CSI or bones of the marine mammal and sea turtle world. A large bulk of what we do is carcass recovery and doing the postmortem exam so that we can learn as much as we can. Our program responds 24-7 to calls of sick, injured, dead, or distressed marine mammals and sea turtles in our area. We can respond to anything as small as a salad plate sized turtle to a 2,000 pound manatee. It's a green sea turtle. These guys are generally um, herbivorous. You can see their beak here. That's serrated um, because they eat seagrass. That's really good for pulling and tearing and ingesting the seagrass. So turtles really only have one body cavity. So if you think about how they would normally do surgery or autopsy on a human, they go through here through the chest. We actually try to take all of this off intact. So these are the pectoral muscles. This is what the turtle uses to swim. Um, they have very big pecs, because uh, this is how they get most of their, their power or propulsion through the water. Green sea turtles actually got their name for the color of their fat, and they get that from the seagrass that they eat. So now we're gonna take the pecs off. Next, we're gonna pull out the heart. Um, the heart sits right here. We're actually going to take a few extra pictures of the heart because it doesn't look very good. It looks bad and it feels bad. There are plaques present along the um, aorta and the atria. Um, it's also on the pericardial sac as well as the heart. There's blood in the chambers. Reptiles only have three chambers, the atria, the aorta, and the ventricle. There's some little plaques, so generally these little white specks we don't see. I am gonna take a couple sections of this to sample, because it is unusual. They really just have this one cavity, um, sort of like a turtle in a bowl. Holy cow. This big bulge here shouldn't be there. That's the urinary bladder. Um, it's generally way down here. <laughs> wow gallbladder is thickened. The plaques on the heart are also on the liver. Liver, you usually want to be a little bit more substantial of an organ. It's not quite as jelly-like. Um, the tissue integrity is a little bit stronger in a liver, and the outer appearance almost has a nice kind of bluish purple color to it. This one has a lot of fluid buildup in it. I think it might have something to do with what um, is happening back here with the, um, the megacolon. I don't know if this would be like a precursor to gallstones. We send them off to veterinary pathologists to be able to tell us really what's going on. Thank you. The intestines should look essentially like this throughout. Um, what we're finding here, you can see there's this massive obstruction Destruction. It's likely full of feces. This is why we euthanized the animal, and this is why it's stranded. Everything was being pulled in because of this mass right here. What happened from this trauma is a lack of nerve function to the back end of the turtle. Without nerve function, you sort of, the turtle has no control over its sphincters over the back. Therefore, it was unable to defecate and urinate, which has caused this backup of that megacolon. So we're about to pull out, yeah, that megacolon. The tail should be out um, because of this megacolon. It was actually pulling the tail in. Um, 
and then developed this huge blockage, so he hadn't been able to pass. There's a feather in here. Okay. Uh, weight of feces and megacolon is 1.395 kilograms. So this is actual tissue that the turtle made um, to help deal with its megacolon. They start to build this up to kind of help wall off whatever is happening. Um, that's a good indication that this animal had been suffering with this and trying to deal with it for a while. This will help us when we get another turtle with this kind of presentation. We'll, we're able to you know, understand what's going on so that, that if we get another one that presents similarly, you know, we may make that decision a little sooner. We try to learn from each of them. So we're pulling out the kidneys now. Turtles need fresh water, just like you and I do, but they can't drink salt water, so they get all of their hydration from their food. And then they have extremely efficient kidneys to be able to conserve their water. Both kidneys are very congested. Uh, so what she will take out next is the lungs. The lungs are the first organ that's right underneath a turtle's carapace, which is why those boat strikes and things like that are so damaging to sea turtles, is because if it penetrates through the, that modified rib cage, that turtle's carapace, the lungs are typically one of the first organs that that boat and propeller are going to hit. This is a turtle's esophagus. These are called papillae. And this helps so as the turtle ingests food, they take in seawater as well. And they can expel that seawater so they don't swallow it. So when we started the necropsy today, we knew that there was an issue going on towards the rear of the animal's gastrointestinal tract, um, megacolon. We were able to confirm that today. Once we got in there, we did see that big mass with over a kilogram of feces and things that had, the animal wasn't able to pass. So given what was happening with the megacolon, it doesn't surprise me that then, you know, the other organs that go into digestion were affected, like the spleen and the liver and the pancreas. So. Um, sadly, we don't know what caused this, this scoliose. Um, it was a result of some sort of trauma. We just don't know what that trauma is. We do know why this animal stranded and what was causing the issue. Um, unfortunately, we see about 40% of the animals we recover have human interaction, and a big chunk of that 40% are boat strikes. Over 80% of that subset of animals are boat strikes. It's only about one out of every four that come in alive and they often don't survive. Their lungs sit right here, so when they hit, get hit by boats, that causes an issue, often piercing the lung. Their kidneys sit right here, so if, it, if it's towards the rear of the animal, it will likely hit the kidneys. So um, while these shells are great to protect them from sharks and other big things out in the ocean, they don't do a great job protecting them from boats. We see a lot of, a lot of death and a lot of human interaction, and that does affect you but when we when we get in here we really try hard to sort of put on our science hat so that we can learn from these animals and help help the rest of them that are out there we don't want to become hardened to it but we do have to sort of set that aside when we're in here to do our job and then you know go home and deal with it elsewhere but <laughs>